Prime Force is an RPG Maker game created using the RPG Maker VX engine. And the game does manage to stand out from the crowd to an extent due to its sheer length. The game is broken up into 10 chapters that easily span over a dozen hours of gameplay. On the downside, the game isn't anywhere near as good as many of the games and franchises that references. If anything, this is the Achilles heel of the game, since it constantly is reminding me of much better games I could be playing like Zelda Ocarina of Time. With that being said, I should probably move on to discussing the actual plot. Plot-wise, the story follows the adventures of Vincent Watkins, a Skylizer captain, who quickly finds himself under attack by raiders early on in the game, but some of the technology used by the raiders makes him believe that someone from Thalasia is involved. Desperate to return home in order to report this troubling information, he finds himself on a journey around half of the globe in order to get there. Along the way, he encounters numerous enemies, ranging from meager grunts to serious threats to him ever seeing his home again. Of course, while Vincent is making his the long journey back, his rival is furthering his goal is to overthrow the king and take over the world. Sadly, Xan isn't a particularly compelling enemy. His reasons for desiring power are never really delved into, and this makes him feel extremely generic and uninteresting. And without a major antagonist that pushes the player to see the end of the game, it begins to become a rather dull and uninteresting, especially when you encounter bosses in the game that are clearly lifted from superior games like Majora's Mask. But this genericness isn't just an issue with Xan, it's an issue with all of the characters in the game. And to make matters worse, the game contains numerous spelling errors and grammatical mistakes as well. While I'd prefer not to count these against the game, they definitely distract from the generic plot that feels overly drawn out as it is. Gameplay-wise, the game features an active time battle system. On the plus side, the player can easily switch this system into passive mode, which is a definite saving grace in my opinion considering my deep-seated hatred of the active time battle system. But I don't want to go into that again since I already talked about that in Ethereon. So the game definitely took a step in the right direction as far as I'm concerned by allowing the player to switch between the two modes, since they can appeal to fans of the active time battle system, or those that prefer traditional turn-based combat like myself. Another plus for the game is that the battle system is rather well balanced for the most part. The only attack that seems like a serious start to the game balance is Brutus's ultimate attack that is learned at level 40. But I didn't unlock that attack until it was time to take on the final boss, so it doesn't really have that much of an impact on the game unless you're willing to spend hours on grinding in order to get it early. If you go out of your way to break the game, then you can hardly complain about it. On the negative side of things, the game never really provides the party with a healer that both excels at casting healing spells and removing negative status effects until late in the game. And at that point, you'll probably stick with Valance since he'll have better group heals and be noticeably higher in terms of levels. Which means you better be willing to splurge quite a bit of cash on antidotes and remedies if you wish to make any significant progress in the game, since there are a lot of regular enemies that can inflict poison on your party, and this status effect never appears to wear off until you use an antidote. And to expand upon my issues with the game, it also contains many bugs. The most common which is that you can walk over underneath objects that should be impassable. And no, this doesn't make up for certain NPCs like the butterflies that get in your way during your adventures in Gloomwood. Another minor bug is that you can trigger certain events multiple times if you walk on the same square. Sadly, the game does contain one major bug where you can go from Chapter 9 all the way back to Chapter 1 by entering the bar. I'm not sure if this happens if you enter other buildings during the chapter, but it is something that definitely needs to be addressed. Gravely speaking, the game is a bit of a mixed bag in my opinion. On one hand, the game does feature some large and diverse areas that feature nice tile work. On the other hand, the game features several areas that are so dark that it can be difficult to navigate. And on a mixed note, the game features some boss fights that are clearly lifted from or inspired by bosses from other games, such as Majora's Mask. And I consider this a mixed note because it just makes me wish I was playing Majora's Mask again instead of this game. Soundwise, the game features a rather diverse set of tracks that are taken from various shows and games like Naruto, which only goes back to the whole issue of this game referencing superior material. Even on the sound effects side of things, this is an issue, since one of the sound effects is the distinct howl used by the Wolfos in Ocarina of Time. This isn't to say that the music or sound effects are bad, but they just make me wish I was playing something else. I must admit that I originally played this game because I was asked to Let's Play it, and this may have made me a bit overly harsh in my review of the game. So much so that I'm not willing to rate the game at this point in time, since I don't believe I can do so fairly. 
It's obvious to me on one hand that this game is a lengthy but highly generic RPG plagued by its lack of an interesting antagonist or protagonist, but I also feel like I'm unfairly comparing it to games like Ocarina of Time, Bleach the Third Phantom, and Naruto Path of Ninja 2 because of the references the game makes to those games or franchises. And it's not fair of me to judge the game based on its inability to live up to those games or the franchises it references. 